tell me about the picture that I have in front of me when I saw you j- documenting your journey, literally. You shared pictures mm. on Instagram um, that looked like Polaroid form mm. of, of you literally growing, of you literally growing. Mm. Did you plan yeah. your little baby? Did you always want it to be a mom? Yeah, I um, I definitely always wanted to be a mom. I think I just I have such a heart for family. I always wanted to get married and have kids. You know, I always I always foresaw that for my future. Um, and somehow, you know, I think back and I I said, you know, you say stuff like, I think you know by the age of thirty, I would love to have you know, at least start having kids. But I mean, you know what? I was like 20, 21 years old. You chat with your friends and, and your girlfriends or whatever you dream yeah. about your future. And uh, and we actually didn't plan Harper. Um, we we didn't like have a schedule or we weren't like, okay, by year two of marriage, we're going to start trying for a family. We um, That's a story in itself, I'll tell you now. But um, it's just funny to look back and be like, oh, wow, you know, I spoke, it was like I spoke it into existence, but by the age of 30, I had my baby. Um, our first child so yeah it was it's absolutely been a dream come true and um we didn't we didn't plan her because we uh we stood in faith for children but um I have endometriosis and we were never on contraception contraceptives or used like family planning or anything uh we sort of just like surrendered it to the Lord and we said you know um we're not gonna you're not gonna try but we're not not gonna try but we're not gonna use anything but we trust that you'll you'll make it happen in the right time. But I think deep down in my heart, I felt like it was going to be a bit of a struggle, or it's gonna we're gonna we were gonna have to try a bit harder. So uh, we were planning on filming um, a film that I wrote um, this year actually, and then I said to Andres, you know after the film we'll try more intentionally you know and if there's a problem we'll go for fertility stuff but I think after the film let's just enjoy what we have and then after the film and then the pandemic hit the movie was was sort of postponed indefinitely and we fell pregnant so I really I really think that yeah I know that the Lord's time was really so perfect for that that when you were conceived Every time when you wake up in the morning, you must know that there is a reason why you are here. There's a reason why we're here, you know? There's a reason why Mm. we were born. There's a reason why you're little Harper. Yeah. Yeah. So so you look at her birth date, you know, and it's it's just so crazy how even the numbers you know the hour that she was born the date the month everything everything just worked together and it fits scripture that we were getting about her life a lot earlier everything was so it was so meticulous you know I had an 18 hour labor and even in that you know the fact that she was born just after five on the on the third of the fifth month it, it, like stuff like that and and her, she was 3.5 kilogram um her head was 35 centimeters she's 53 centimeters tall everything like the five and the three and the five and the three and the scripture that we got for her also points to like Matthew 5 is like everything just came together and I realized that God's hand was on this girl's life even before she was even before she was an, a thought in my mind or something in my womb. So absolutely the purpose on, on her life and the purpose on our lives, um, it's really quite clear that there's a bigger hand in this that's writing her story and this story. All of our stories indeed. There's a picture of you raising your hands to the sky and it's this beautiful yeah. picture of, it almost looks heavenly, like you colored it in. It looks like you're at one of those parties, you know, like Africa. Yeah, Bay, yeah, yeah. Where- <laughs> <laughs> were you the, the smoke the- bombs. oh yeah were you yes what, what happened for you what happened for you in that moment mm. so uh we were we were we were filming a shoot for the harvest collection which is my jewelry range um that i was partnering with with manala jewelry and um at the end of the shoot you know it, it was it was gonna rain and in onze to gesien okay ons het a paar ons het a eer of so um and then at the end of the shoot we were done and we turned around and we saw the clouds merging together, the blue and the pink. And I swear that video is, uh, that picture is not edited at all. We turned around and it, it met together. Like it's insane, like exactly like that. And um, and that was the day before we had our gender reveal. So we didn't know, is it blue? Is it pink? What is it going to be? You know, but in that moment, I just raised my hands. I'm like, Lord, thank you for like withholding the rain. And thank you for blessing us with this picture. And the photographer took a picture from 
the back. Um, and this is the picture that she took and she didn't edit it. She just sent it to me like that. And that evening I, I went home and I, I showed the picture to Andres and my husband started crying and he said, you know, as he was praying for our, our baby, that's the picture that he saw. He saw a picture of a little girl standing in a harvest field with her hands raised in worship. And, you know, we felt that God said that she was going to be a worshiper. And, um, and yeah, so that was the, the picture that he had in his mind. And this is the picture that we just took. So it's a, it's quite a, it's a, it's a picture quite close to our heart. And then after that, you know, we decided to give her the middle name Harvest, uh, which was met with a bit of controversy. Um, we knew that that was going to, that I'd look, but yeah. we really had word from the Lord about it. And it was just, it's a, it's a very special name for us. When you think of your journey leading up to being a mommy and now yeah. having the baby, I mean, I know the answer to this for me, but is it a lot different to what you expected it to be? It's such a good question because my husband asked it to me, I think last week, we had a bit of a date and he said to me, is this everything you expected it to be? It took me a while, but I think I didn't know what to expect. And mm -hmm. I, I'm glad I didn't know. I mean, you hear everything from everyone else. And I sort of, I don't, I don't want to say that I sort of just shut off when people told me that it was going to be, a, you know, I did, you go through hell, <laughs> you go through hell, people are like, you go through hell, you never sleep again. And I think when people would tell me that in my naivety, I was like, I appreciate you sharing that with me. And I realize, you know, you have your story, but I'm just going to. I'm going to, I'm going to take a bit of it, but I'm I'm not going to take it too mm. hard because I want to write my own story. I want to experience yes. it for myself. And then I went through hell. So <laughs> it was quite accurate. Yes, the thing though. You, know, you don't, don't know what you don't know. No. You don't know what you don't know. But yeah. my husband's also like yours, very involved. I don't remember mm. not sleeping, not sleeping. I, d I don't remember. <laughs> Not, yeah. not, did, not, did you not not sleeping. I think I <laughs> deliberately wiped it out of my mind. <laughs> Your, your relationship with, with God and the miracles that has happened in your life. If you There's could, a lot. A lot. <laughs> I know some of them and you don't have to share all of that here because I don't want to make you cry today or get all of us emotional. <laughs> <Too late. laughs> I know, but perhaps there's someone that needs hope today because here's yeah. the thing, even with God in our lives, things are still hard sometimes it doesn't make things Absolutely. easier yeah but mm. there's a mom and a single mom and someone that needs hope and perhaps they need mm. something to fall back on when everything mm. else disappears yeah yeah and so I want to give you an opportunity to share one story of hope in your life because mm. it does seem to me that God and his creation manifests in your life sure beautifully even the way that you spoke about your unborn daughter and about your own life. And so, and now for a moment of hope. Oh, to think of one specific thing, you know, um, I think my biggest, one of the, my biggest testimonies is, is my husband, um, having met him and having, I've always trusted for a husband that would be an amazing father to my children one day. Um, because I might not, you know, it was, it was something that might've been, was just a longing in my heart as a little girl, you know, something I didn't necessarily experience. And in I believe you put in that in Hani Mar, my man is absolutely asking for the Arab. And it was he was the biggest prayer answered for me in my life, possibly. Because I look at Andres now and I think, you know, this is exactly this is everything that I prayed for and I trusted for. And it was, it seemed very impossible. We got married at a very later stage and we worked through a lot in our relationship. But you know yeah that Andres is my biggest gift um and he's my biggest testimony and, and I think for a lot of single women and even single moms you know that are still trusting the Lord for their husbands or that are still waiting and are st and still need to you know exert patience and and hope um it, it happened for me against all odds you know and it can it can happen for anyone else out there and also for single moms, I feel it is not so up my heart. For, so single moms are so in my heart the past four weeks. And how many times I look at Andres and I'm like, I have no idea how single mamas do it. I, I get any idea. And my mom was a single mama. She, um, she, you know, in those first few weeks and months, she didn't have, she had her mom. 
but I have such a heart just to say to single moms, you are doing amazing. You are like, you are the true heroes of society because doing it without that kind of support, I commend them, absolutely commend them. Um, but may, may the Lord sustain them. You know, that's, that's even in the midst of all of the lack of sleep and the forms of torture um, <laughs> and crying babies and, and prepping bottles, et cetera, et cetera. I, I do know that there's a presence in the, in the midst of the night, you know, and you're suffering in a dark, dark night of the soul. There's a peace and a presence that has guided me. And I know that is also there for single mamas and, and people that go through waiting periods. But I think it's wonderful that you can use your own life and your platforms to give hope to moms and dads. And here's the thing. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah. So perhaps you've chosen the guy and he's the daddy of uh, your baby and you don't like what you see in him right now. Yeah. It's never too late to ask for guidance and to, oh, you said beautiful yeah. things. Breastfeeding or a bottle? <laughs> mom guilt or mom shame? That's the question. Um, how many days um, did it take? How many days did it take for you to master the boob in the mouth? The boob in the mouth took um, three and a half weeks. Then mastitis ended the journey for me. That's so fine. I Woo-hoo. yeah I had a, I had a month and um, it was intimate and it was messy like beautiful relationships are. But um, I didn't have enough milk, you know. Uh, she was just hungry all the time, and my baby needs to eat. So I was like, I my my daughter needs a mom that is not having panic attacks, yeah. that is present, yeah. that is sleeping, um, that is enjoying her. And well I done. can't. Yeah, it was a difficult. I get the hard trial, and mm-hmm. now I am just so grateful. I'm it's, so so grateful. It's good for to cry, visit. but you're right. The baby must mm. eat. And here's the thing. Mm. Then you have a second baby, please God, and then yeah, I to my, I can hear that book scrape me. I can wait. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till that book writes itself. Um, yeah. Uh, w- did you feel? Uh, can you tell? I'm trying to quick fire, but I'm so interested in everything because I'm so scared. We get yeah. Out of time. Um, okay. Did you did you want to wait the 39, 40 weeks, or did you want baby out at 37 weeks because it's just too uncomfortable? I wanted her out by 28 weeks. <laughs> Actually, by her uncle, by the cement. Oh, I'm so impatient. No, so what happened is she lay very low. So it was by low, fun by frugh. So the gynae and my midwife at, at like 32 weeks said to me, please just hold her in until 36 weeks. Yeah. She's never felt a baby that, that low by that oh, stage. Gosh. And so I was waiting for it to come by 36 weeks. By 38 weeks, I was painting by numbers just to keep myself <laughs> sane because I thought she was going to come by 36 weeks. Yeah, so set up 39 weeks. But um, I did first. I saw 42 come it. Oh my word. I would have no. Nee, I couldn't even think so soon at me. So I think you answered already. Midwife, doula, or cesarean? Um, had a midwife and a doula and a water birth. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, advice to moms when someone comes and wants to see the baby and lifts the cloth of the pram uh, like this. I don't even uh, have a cloth. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah, I see the baby? Andre said the pram gefat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> yep. so flick of the wrist, flick of the wrist on their hands. And if it's even if it's family, you um well, or you can just say the baby is sleeping, and then you whack her. Then hand. You um, and then also the please sanitize mm-hmm. first is also very important. Please sanitize first. And then by the time that they are busy sanitizing, you lift the cloth and you're like, oh sorry, so slop. Yeah, but then yeah. Um mm. how many baby grows has she not worn that she has grown out of? Um, she hasn't grown out of anything yet because she's, I mean, she's four kilograms, but she's quite petite. So she's still you still I'm have- still on. Really? N- number zero diapers. Yeah. Oh, yellow. Klein, klein your piece. So, yeah. no, so she hasn't grown out of anything. It was, it is. I'm very proud of you. Thank it you is so wonderful much, speaking to you. And it is, if anything, if you don't know anything, do you know what's going to get you through? Especially you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what's going to get mm-hmm. you through? Your belief. <laughs> your belief will get you through. 